Well, so many people are spreading light and love on this special day. Welcome back to CBS 3 at 4. I'm Jessica Cartalia in for Siafa. And I'm Natasha Brown. As we do honor the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., newly uncovered evidence reveals exactly where and when he first became inspired to pursue nonviolence in the advancement of civil rights. It was right here in Philadelphia. Brandon Goldner takes us to the church where it all began. It's Sunday at First Unitarian Church in Philadelphia. The one day of the week every week since 1796 when people like Reverend Samoria Brandon come to be inspired. That as we sit in these pews on Sunday morning, we're hoping that if someone says something to you that you will take that away and that can be something that can inspire your journey. Among the thousands of people over the years who became inspired sitting in these pews, a 21-year-old seminary student in 1950 named Martin Luther King Jr. On the very stage behind me, Mordecai Johnson delivered the speech that inspired Martin Luther King to take up the methods of nonviolence. The journey for activist Patrick Duff to make this new discovery was inspired by rejection. 753 Walnut Street in Camden is where Dr. King lived while he was studying at the Crozier Theological Seminary. Duff spent years trying to get this dilapidated Camden Row home recognized by New Jersey's Historic Preservation Office. But in January 2020, it rejected his application. It made me furious. It made me absolutely furious. I couldn't believe it. But instead of giving up... And I began researching more. Historians long believed that a building here on Brown Street, long since replaced by modern homes, was where a young Dr. King heard that speech on nonviolence by then Howard University President Dr. Mordecai Johnson. But through his additional research, Duff discovered the speech actually took place on November 19, 1950, at the First Unitarian Church. I could say it was very emotional. You know, me and my, my co author hugged. So it's in this one. The church's own archives, which senior Reverend Abby Tennis reviewed with Duff, helped confirm his belief. It was really exciting to hear about, and then it was exciting to go back through our own archives. Duff submitted his research to the Pennsylvania State Historic Preservation Office, which recently recommended the church for national listing. The National Park Service could approve the listing as early as February. Now there's a place people can touch and feel, can celebrate. Having grown up during the civil rights movement, Reverend Brandon says it's meaningful to worship in a church that had an outsized impact on millions of people. So to be in a church where Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King sat is very inspiring. Inspiring people outside this church's walls and the person who happens to be sitting in the same spot Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. sat in more than 70 years ago. We could just be a regular person sitting in a pew and all of a sudden something lights us on fire and it can turn into a movement that changes everybody's life. The storm is passing over. Brandon Goldner, CBS, Philadelphia. Hallelujah.